wanted to talk a little bit about automating patch changes on the XFX today. I recently bought an X8 and I absolutely love it and I love having the ability to change whatever I want whenever I want, but there's still a lot of situations where I would really like to have stuff automated. Back when I had my XFX, I had set up automation to run throughout the entire set of the Titans and Time shows and it would sync up with our lighting, our click track, backing track, and everything else and I wouldn't have to worry about where I was on stage if I was going to hit the wrong switch. So what I'm going to do is set up the X8 so that I can have that same ability. So the first thing I do when I'm setting that up is I make sure that my patches are ready to go. I usually make one patch per song and have the tempo stuff ready to go, I can have all the effects ready to go and everything's mapped out into scenes. In this instance, I'm working with the song over and over, and I have three scenes set up. I have a clean scene, distortion, and then a lead tone with some delay. So what I'm going to do is come over to my Logic project that I have set up. We run backing tracks to front of house, uh, click track to the drummer, lighting if we have the ability to have that at the time, uh, which is run by another uh, MIDI track. And now I want to add a MIDI track for the XFX changes. And this works for both the XFX and the X8 pretty much the same way. Um, you might want to double check the MIDI sends in the manual. They have them all listed, which is super convenient. Uh, but the first thing that you're going to need to do is make a MIDI track. And once you have that, you need to uh, select this drop down over here in the left under track and change the port to the X8 MIDI. Which by the way, um, I'm not actually using a MIDI cable, I'm using the USB cable that I use to run XEdit. Um, our interface doesn't have the MIDI output, so by just using the USB it works exactly the same. Um, and of course it's just that simple little cable. Um, so what I'm going to do is come over here under the track. Um, I'm going to rename this just so that I can keep track of everything. Um, I'm going to create a new empty MIDI region. I'm going to double click so that I can edit that. Uh, now you don't have to put a note in the actual draw area, but I usually do just so I can keep track of where I'm at and keep track of all the different changes. Um, so in the velocity area down here, you're gonna change the controller to program change. And that's gonna be able to tell the XFX what patch you wanna go to. So uh, like I said, you might wanna reference the owner's manual so that you know what MIDI send uh, changes over to the patch that you want. So I believe this is this is on 16 and 3 so this should be sends 120 something let's try it and find out it should be 122 i think and if i just play that that is going to Change two over and over, so I was correct. Um, and that's at 122. I have the actual patch is uh, it's in bank 16 on preset three. So everything just increasingly goes up. Once you have the program change in there to tell you which uh, preset to go to, I'm gonna go to other and I'm gonna select channel 34. The MIDI sends for all the scenes end up on channel 34 and it just makes it super easy to program everything on that one channel. So what I'm going to do is just add a new note here and I'm going to go, the first tone is a clean tone. Um, the numbers are a little offset so if I change the control value to zero it's going to end up on the first scene. If you have it on one it's going to end up on the second scene. So this is set up for the clean tone. Something I always do too is make sure that all of these uh, little changes end up on the measure that you want them to happen. Uh, make sure they're as tight as possible. So every everything that's changing is on one. So now that that's in there, if I play this, 
the Axe 8 goes straight to that patch and that scene and everything's lined up so I can just play straight through that section. That's where I want my next change to happen. Uh, it clicks into a um, the distortion right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my MIDI section back, and I'm gonna go find the spot where that changes. I'm gonna draw another note there just so that I can keep track of where I'm at and I'm gonna put two um, change co uh, control changes there next to each other um, I'm gonna have the last one go to my next uh, my second scene which is gonna be value number one and I'm gonna change that so that it lines up with the beginning of the measure and I'm also going to change that other control value just so that it lines up right at the end. And 240 is the value for being right at the end of that measure. Um, of course, this change is actually in the middle of a measure, so it lines up right in the center. Um, so if I play through it, um, you're going to see that it changes to the second scene. So as you could see that didn't totally line up with where I wanted it to change. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just highlight um, all three of those and I'm going to take and move them over uh, to where I want them to change uh, just so that this flows a little bit better. So I'm just going to click and drag on this last section of the position just so that I can bring it back a little bit and that should be a much better change spot for me. So what I'm going to do is move on to the next section and change back to a clean tone. So when I put this in, I'm going to go back to my first preset. So the uh, value that corresponds with that is zero. And I'm going to line this back up with the beginning of the measure and line the one before it just at the end of the measure. And this will help keep from any kind of craziness going on because when there's uh, a line drawn where it, it kind of slopes up, it's going to change through your presets a little strange and it could cause some weird issues. So if I play back through that little section. <laughs> So that worked perfect. I'm going to go ahead and jump to the solo section just to show you a different value there because um, that's my third scene so the number that corresponds with that is two and you're going to change um, this of course to line up with the beginning and this one with the end of the measure. <laughs> So that's how you go through and automate your patches. You can do as much or as little of that as you want. Uh, there's a few songs that I have that there's a lot of different changes going on and it's really cool because you can have all sorts of different effects and activate whatever you want whenever you want. So it's really cool that you can kind of have your solo tone going, be standing at the center of the stage and not have to worry about running back and hitting another switch to get out of the solo. You can stay at the center of the stage until your solo is over. Like I said, this is something that works with the Axe 8 and the Axe effects both the same exact way, and it's something that's really convenient and easy to do.
So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and make sure to subscribe.